Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from the lands of the Gadigal people. This is ABC News Daily. In the Northern Territory, thousands of US Marines and Australian soldiers are training for battle. It's a war game, but there's a lot at stake, amid heightened concern from the Pentagon that China could invade Taiwan within years. The United States is even sending nuclear-capable bombers here. Today, Four Corners reporter Angus Grigg on his investigation into how the Top End is becoming a major military base why that could leave Australia vulnerable to attack. Angus, at the top end of Australia, there are serious war games underway and barely any of us know about them. Yeah, well, that's right. So about uh, a month ago, we went up and uh, did some filming with the US Marines around what they call Operation Predators Run. Mm. And uh, it's really a, a war game uh, where they play out a uh, pretend battle. Mm-hmm. He's going to check us and make sure... So it was the uh, US Marines or a platoon of US Marines up against some Australians that were dug in deep in the bush. And... Uh, the Australians were joined by two Australian tanks. And so we walked in with the US Marines and then sort of observed as they did this sort of final push, you know, tanks firing, bullets, you know, going off, smoke grenades and the whole bit as they sort of assaulted on a a ridge line. You see that tan line? They're right there. Gosh, and the Australians, the Australian soldiers, they're acting, what, as the enemy in this war game? Yes, that's right. Mm, Sounds really... Real. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and Colonel Christopher Steele, he's the commanding officer and he's watching this unfold. It could be that there's more significance to this terrain here than originally... You spoke to him. Yes. I mean, he has a great saying where he sort of says, uh, iron sharpens iron. And um, so the idea is that you fight against a sort of free thinking and sort of agile enemy because that trains you up to sort of prepare for the next battle. Uh, as one man sharpens the other. So we are fighting against ourselves and we find that that sets conditions for us to be successful, we believe, on the next battlefield. Mm, And they're rehearsing for a war with China. Well, they never quite say it as explicitly as that, Mm. but it's very, very obvious that they are preparing for the next battle. They say that very explicitly. Um, but they won't say what the next battle is. But all likelihood is that if there is to be a conflict in this region, it would be uh, with China mm-hmm. and it would probably be over Taiwan. Mm, OK. We know that China has said it wants to ensure the unification with Taiwan happens by 2049. That's a fair way off still. Well, that's what they've they've said, but... Um, Look, really, the timelines have been compressed a lot. Mm. And so now we're getting a situation where people are actually saying we could see a conflict over Taiwan happen in the next three to five years. Mm. In fact, um, I liken it to what we're seeing or what we saw in the lead up to the Ukraine war, where we had lots and lots of signalling out of the White House. You know, the Russians are going to invade, the Russians are going to invade. Time frame. Now, we can't pinpoint the day at this point. Uh, and we can't pinpoint the hour. But what we can say is that there is a credible... And most people, including myself, sort of said, oh, look, I don't really see this happening. I I can't see how this is going to happen. I I think what we're seeing out of the White House now is similar sort of messaging. So on four separate occasions, Joe Biden has said that he would come to the aid of Taiwan. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's a commitment we made. Now, once might be a slip up. On four times, I think it's more than a coincidence. Mm. So, yeah, I think it is a very scary time. And I think these sort of this idea of an invasion of Taiwan by China, which was seen as a very distant possibility, even, you know, two years ago, now suddenly seems very real. 
Mm, it's a bit scary, isn't it? And we saw, of course, Nancy Pelosi, she visited the island and that really you, did Mary raise Mary. the tensions, didn't it, at the time? It is such a high honour. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I thought the Pelosi visit was pretty over the top, actually, and it was overly mm. provocative. Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate, both sides of the aisle, united in our support for Taiwan. And the response we saw from the Chinese really was a rehearsal for an invasion of Taiwan. A show of force captured and beamed to the world by Chinese state media. BLA warplanes fly past the coastline. And so what they did is they Taiwan. effectively blockaded the island. Um, they controlled all the sea routes, all the air routes. And while it was seen as military exercises, the people we've spoken to said they saw it as a rehearsal mm -hmm. for a full-on invasion of Taiwan. You've mentioned that there is or there seems to be concern that there could be an invasion much sooner than we previously thought. Who's saying that? So we spoke to, you know, pretty serious people uh, in the think tank community uh, in the US. Mm -hmm. We spoke with uh, Oriana Schuyler Mastro from Stanford University, and she was the one that really has very deep concerns about an invasion of Taiwan by the Chinese happening as soon as 2025 or even 2027. I think it's somewhat inevitable that China uses limited force against Taiwan in the next three to four years. And this is largely dependent on when I think the Chinese leadership, and in particular Xi Jinping, can be confident that his military can do this. You know, interestingly, what she told us was that for the last 15 years, she had been speaking with senior people within the Chinese army, the PLA, the Chinese military. I've heard great levels of confidence in the Chinese military, and this is relatively new. For 15 years, you, I would ask the Chinese military if they could do this, and the answer was no. So the fact that for the first time at the end of 2020, they're starting to say, yes, I think that's a significant message we should pay attention to. So she seems pretty certain that this is going to happen sooner rather than later. Do others think that too? You went to Washington to find out. Yes, indeed. So what we've seen in the last uh, few months is that they've had what they call open source war games. So previously these uh, war games were usually done in a classified space at the Pentagon. Mm. But as concerns have grown, what we've seen is that these war games have become public and in a sort of in an attempt to perhaps deter both sides, mm. the Center for Independent Studies and the uh, Center for New American Security have both conducted their own war games. The CSIS game found that the Chinese were not successful in their invasion of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds like really good news, but it is a very, very bloody victory for the US. And we spoke to uh, military analyst uh, Becca Wasser from the Center for New American Security, and she said there would be losses from both sides on a scale not seen since World War II. It is likely to go on for weeks, if not months, if not longer. And as that happens, you're going to have continued fighting and loss of life, not only for the United States and its allies and partners and China, but also on the ground in Taiwan with some of the civilians who are going to suffer the most from this conflict. So there's uh, speculation the US would lose between 500 and 900 aircraft, upwards of 30 surface ships, including two aircraft carriers. And bear in mind, each aircraft carrier has about 5,000 people on them. So it would be a very, very bloody victory for the US if you could even call it a victory. It's really worrying. From what you've told us, the US is building up a huge military presence in the Northern Territory and Australian soldiers are training with the US Marines in case of a war between China and Taiwan. It sounds like if that does happen, we'd be in the midst of any potential conflict. Well, absolutely. So Northern Australia really has become the sweet spot uh, for the US. So mm. as it currently stands, there are US bases in Okinawa in Japan and also uh, the US base in Guam. They're actually too close to China. So they're within the range of Chinese missile strike. Northern Australia has this great advantage that it is close enough to the action, but not too close to be uh, vulnerable to Chinese missile strikes.
That said, you know, the Chinese are working very, very hard on their missile capability. So absolutely, um, this increasing presence of the US in northern Australia makes us very much a target. Mm, As part of your investigation, you uncovered that the US will be sending B-52 bombers here. What are B-52 bombers? The B-52s really are the backbone of the US Air Force. They are strategic bombers, and that means that they can carry nuclear weapons. But also, they can carry the widest array of conventional weapons of any of the US bomber fleet. Those B-52 bombers could potentially strike the Chinese mainland or strike Chinese assets in the region. What we know is that the US is looking to deploy or rotate up to six B-52 bombers to the Tindall Air Base south of Darwin. Now, this is a really big step up in Australia's commitment to the US. The US Air Force have told us that these dedicated facilities that they are building for uh, the US Air Force, that will be ready at the end of 2026. Mm. Having said that, we could actually see the B-52s coming to Australia before that because there's been a sort of massive upgrade going on at the Tyndall Air Base, um, which will allow not only the B-52s to land, but also to share some of the Australian facilities that are being built. Angus, what's China saying about all of this? Who have you spoken to? Yeah, we spoke to uh, Victor Gao, who's really a Chinese insider and one of the few uh, Chinese academics who's sanctioned to speak to the foreign press. And he was very chilling, actually. I mean, he said to us uh, words to the effect of, don't think just because uh, you've got a US air base in Northern Australia that that's going to save you. He said to us, we will deal with Australia just like we'll deal with the US if it comes to that. You need to be fully aware what China is all about. China is a force not to be bullied. If anyone threatens China with force, they will be dealt with by force in return. And he even said to us, look, I really don't want to say what will happen to Australia in front of your audience. And then he went on to say, if there is a war, it will be a total war and it will be Armageddon. Gosh, yeah, that's pretty scary. Is our military then equipped to protect us? Well, that's the very big question. And I guess that's why the government is undertaking its strategic review of Australia's defence capability. And it should be released or an interim part of that should be released any day now. The big issue is that Australia doesn't have very many missiles of its own. Now, the problem here is that... um, the you know supply chains, if you like, for missiles are very, very constrained. And any missiles that are being made are being sent, uh, understandably, to the war in Ukraine. And so there's actually a sort of global shortage of missiles. If we didn't have that missile capability, we are very, very vulnerable. Angus Grigg is a reporter for Four Corners. You can watch his full report on iview. A YouGov survey released last month found almost half of Australians believe the country should send troops to help defend Taiwan against China if required. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer this week is Sydney Peed. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free. 